I have been wanting to do this video for so long and it's how to fix makeup problems that you may not even know that you're having or doing. Now I want to state makeup is a personal expression. So if you love what you're doing, obviously continue doing it. But doing this career for 25 years, these are the mistakes that I commonly see and that clients have come to me asking to correct. So that's what I'm going to go over today with you all. Let's get started. Let's start with the primer. To primer or not to primer? That is the question. Now here's the thing. I didn't use primers for a long time personally for myself and for quite a few clients because I found that they were too thick. They were really rich in dimethicone and they were like putty to me. And so I like to use a really good moisturizing base and I still feel that way when it comes to primers. Now these are my two favorite primers. This one I use pretty consistently on clients with all skin types because it's lighter in texture. It's the new Forever Glow Veil Primer. It's just really like a serum super light, goes on beautifully, gives a lift from within glow. And then my personal favorite is the Chantecai Rose Glow Tint because I'm combination dry and I like the skincare benefits and I like the hydration. You don't want to put primer all over your face. You want to target primers, meaning if you're really dry out here and you're oily through here, there's no need to put an oil control primer everywhere because you're going to dry out the outer edges of the face. Now on half my face, I'm going to do the way I would do clients makeup and address concerns that clients have asked me. And on the other side, I'm going to do my makeup in the way that I see clients do their makeup and show you some of the mistakes that I have seen. All right, let's start first with the primer. Now, some clients don't believe in using moisturizer or primer. A lot of people do not use sunscreen. A lot of people do not use a good moisturizer. A lot of people don't wash their face at night. So I'm not going to put anything on this side of the face because that's usually what I feel with clients is there's like a dry layer of skin. On this side, we're going to do a primer. Now I'm using the Forever Glow by Dior. And we're just going to put this all over. And you guys are going to see the power of a good primer. All right, nice and primed. Let's go ahead and go in with foundation. Now I'm going to use the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation because it is a beautiful foundation. It's in my top five favorites. But you're going to see right away what happens when you put too much foundation on, which is like probably the number one thing that I see constantly is too much product in all forms, whether that be eyeshadow, lipstick, concealer, so on and so forth. And so I see a lot of this stuff, which I'll do what I've been seeing this last couple years. So this is what we've been seeing on social media is just, you know, pouring foundation. To me, it's wasteful and it can look very aging. I've seen people that take their sponge and then they just pat it on all over quickly. Now, mind you, there's usually more product. I just don't want to waste product. I've seen it where it's like dripping off of people's faces and it just, it like, it hurts my makeup soul. <laughs> Usually by this point, there's a whole other pump that comes out on the face to just really, you know, get that extra coverage. Now, why does it look bad to me? And why don't I do it? And why is it aging? Because thick makeup looks like a mask. And it also will emphasize pores and fine lines. It'll settle. And for those of you that like coverage, there's foundation that you can get that is full coverage that you can just put on in thin layers, which you'll see on this side because it all comes down to technique. All right, so look how it's already settling. Look how it's grabbing the texture in my lid. Look at this hair. I'm going to run my marionette lines. Look at my pores. And just in general, how it looks like a mask. Like everything's just sitting on the surface. Look, it's already trying to settle into this area. All right, let's go ahead and do this side in a lighter fashion. So for this side, I'm going to take a pump. I'm going to disperse it in little dots evenly across the face, turning my blender over. And we're just going to tap that in. Now I go and take the other side and I buff it. And I do a press and roll motion. And what this does is it helps to adhere the pigments in the foundation to the skin, kind of warms them up together while picking up any excess that is sitting 
on the surface of the skin so that it looks much more natural. All right, let's bring it in so you can see the difference. And you can still see my pores, but it's not standing out. There's nothing settling around my eyes. This doesn't look as creased. This looks better out here. It's not a mask-like effect. Nothing settling around my marionette lines. In fact, they look softer because there's nothing that's trying to emphasize that. There's no pigments gathering there. The difference it makes. Oh, concealer, concealer. I am an official concealer snob. I do not like bad concealers. And what I mean by that is dry and thick and heavy. I can't even begin to tell you guys, when you are working with drier products like powders or concealers, because concealers have a lot of pigment to them, so they can look dry, it can really ruin a makeup look. It could be very aging. It could grab onto texture, whether that be fine lines, pores, or acne. So I'm gonna show you guys is how I see people doing this kind of concealer still, but especially in the last, God, 10 years. So let's get into what I mean by that. So here's the concealer. And what I see is, and we've all seen it, we've seen this thing, right? We've seen the dots that move around, but it's still really thick and heavy, and this type of thing, and this, and highlighting, and highlighting out here. And let's just keep going. We contour, right? So we're gonna highlight this area, and we're gonna highlight this area. And why not? Let's highlight a little bit up here. Oh, don't forget the brow bone. And yeah, just a little bit of concealer to work with. And then you see people take a brush or their beauty blender and they quickly beat it into the face. Now I'll tell you, the first time I learned to do this type of makeup, it was for stage makeup. It was literally to be photographed or seen from the stage. It's supposed to be dramatic. And I would go out and see these individuals who I could tell had been doing YouTube tutorial style makeup and I just was a little bit in shock to be honest with you because I thought wow that's a look and being somebody who's creative and likes to think outside the box I'm like awesome you do you but I also used to think I wonder if that individual meant to do their makeup that way you know okay look at this we are ready for our close-up Mr. DeMille the theater is here <laughs> all right let's go ahead and go on the other side and Soften this look up a bit and then I'll zoom it in. And you can just put little dots right where the cheek folds into that socket. A couple little dots for where you want to highlight, where you want to lift. If you want to do a slight contouring, you could do a couple dots down here, a couple dots where there's some redness. And I work outward so that it doesn't settle into the groove. You don't want the pigments to gather there, so work in the opposite direction. What I mean by that is I'm going to work out this way, not this way. It helps to kind of erase that line. Make sure you're using the tip of your beauty blender to really push that concealer into that crease so that it doesn't gather. I'll even turn it around and buff it. Kind of pick up any excess. And then lightly buff into that chin area. As you can see by just adding this light here and here, this automatically creates a flushed look because we've neutralized color here or brightened that area. Anything surrounding that area, any color that's near there will automatically pop, which is a great way to kind of reverse highlight contour. And just buffing that back and forth. Now what if I had a pimple or a dark spot? Well, I do, I have a sunspot right here. So I'm gonna take my concealer and very lightly just add a little dot here. I like to take my pinky and just bounce it. Now you can target it if you want with a small brush, put a little bit on and then just work in a small circle all the way around so that it disperses the pigment evenly and build up slowly. Now, for those of you that watch my channel, you know I've talked about it consistently. I was French artistry trained, meaning less is more. It's okay for some of our, what we call imperfections to come through, meaning that freckles are beautiful, a dark spot here and there is gorgeous, the purple and blues under your eye give you a sense of life. So something to think about is not creating a mask-like effect, but creating something that really just enhances what you have. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so terrible I can't oh boy we're just we're just in crease heaven right now look at that oh boy just 
creasing and looks old and this is just just bringing up texture left and right all right here we have the other side no creasing nothing settling nice and brightening do you see how this side is so much softer than this side here let's get into my other snobby area and that's powder oh my god how powder can make or break a look you guys i'm gonna use my gucci powder today it's a go-to for me it's definitely my top five it has a matte finish which i usually don't gravitate towards matte but when it comes to powder i skip it altogether under the eyes unless it's for an editorial look or it's for film because you don't want to have light bouncing off the skin you need to use a powder but in day-to-day -day life you can skip powder sometimes even in photographs if you blend your products in well enough and make them look skin like you can skip powder altogether but today i'm going to show you guys how to set your foundation with powder in a way that looks natural but first let's go in with how i see many 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 clients over the years do powder so first they start with their brush and they collapse the brush and i've talked about this consistently but your brush is best used when you just use the dome of it you don't want to collapse your products in one is it's bad for your brush but two most importantly is it creates a streaky dry textured look across the skin because you're loading your brush up with a bunch of product and then you're moving already what you've placed down so let's go into what i normally see though and that is this type of thing everyone's in a hurry they quickly do this they swirl it really hard you see all this powder kicking up you're just wasting product and you're like great now let's just go in and do this action really fast and thick and heavy we're looking nice and old and dry now especially around the eyes so let's go ahead and do the other side by using the dome of the brush softly swirling taking off any excess i like to softly work up barely touching the skin it actually feels like a light soft massage it's just relaxing I work up once i get to my pores i work down so that i don't emphasize texture we don't want to push product into a pore then i work around the edges softly down the nose around the brow and i normally leave the under eye alone but whatever's left over at the very end if you want to set your concealer and you're someone who likes powder under the eye then you're just going to lightly sweep around that's it just a very little bit We'll take whatever's left down the throat and a little on the ears. We'll do the same on this side. We'll collapse the brush again, though, so that it's even. We are looking nice and dry on this side. And here's this side. Softer, more hydrated looking. It's not gathering, especially around here. See how it's just grabbing all the texture on my lid around under the eye area where this is much softer especially around here, those marionette lines. So once again, less is more light hand. Now let's get some brows on. Now normally I do my eyebrows first and my mascara, but I find most clients actually do their foundation first. So I'm thinking about what I've seen over the years and I'm going in those steps. But for the brows, I'm gonna use my Tarte sketch and set. Now I did a thorough video on brows. I will link the description down below for those of you that have thin brows, no brows, or sparse brows. And I just did a quick tutorial on my TikTok and it got over 3.3 million views. And I realized how many women and men have problems with their brows, especially over plucked brows. This has been a godsend for me. And that is because it is a gel. So it can stain the hair and the skin underneath to make the brow look fuller. Now, I'm not going to get fully into detail when it comes to how this product works. If you want, you can look at the YouTube video I have below, or you can head to my TikTok where I go over thoroughly how to use this product in particular. All right. So this is what I see with this product and where it goes really wrong really quickly. You pull it out without scraping any product off. And I see people go in pretty heavy handed and with gels in general, they're either, I find, too light or they get too dark really quickly, which you can see. And then it gets fuller and bigger and thicker. And although I want my brows to look fuller, since they are sparse, thin, and overplucked, is I don't want them to look artificial and big 
and like a Sharpie type of eyebrow. So I see this a lot and then individuals will write me and be like, it didn't work. It was too thick. It was too dark. It was too goopy. All right. So this is what I see often. Let's go ahead and correct this. First of all, when you're using any product, you want to use a light hand. But if you're using a gel or a pomade, you want to scrape most of the product off. Don't forget to scrape the tip off too because a lot of the product from the bottom gets on that tip area. Once you have most of the product off, you can go in with a really light hand and work up and out. It's better to build up color slowly. So as you can see, I have a gap here. So I'll take the other side as a waxy pencil and I'll just lightly fill it in. If you want to stay natural, just work underneath and work from point A to point B, from point B to point C. Think of a roof of a house. Here's the difference of not scraping enough product off or using basically too much and having a little more control, taking your time and adding less product. So taking my Kevin Kwan eyelash curler, I'm going to hold this very tightly. This is something I see happen a lot, and that is holding your eyelash curler to the point where you create an L shape instead of something that's rounded. That usually happens when you are close to the eyelash base and you're holding it down really hard because you want to get a good curl, and I get it, but you end up creating something that goes out and up instead of something that softly gives you a beautiful C shape. So to create a beautiful C shape eyelash with your eyelash curler, you're going to start at the base and you're going to lightly clamp down and wiggle upward and go to the next section, do the same thing and work up to the tip and do the same thing. This will create a feathery fanned out lash look. As you can see, it's kind of a softer curl rather than this one just goes straight up. Ooh, let's get into the mascara. So on this side, I'm gonna apply it how I see a lot of people do that. And that is quickly just putting the mascara on. And what ends up happening is you end up getting the back of your eyelid. So then you have to go back in and fix it, which can be a pain. And you're probably doing this a lot, cleaning up this way and that way. Whereas if you take your mascara wand, you place it at the base and wiggle it and open and close your eyes by blinking, you will disperse the mascara onto the lashes while dragging the product through. And you have more control because you're not moving the wand all the way around. So your chances of getting the mascara on the back part of your eyelid is far less than if you do it like this side. Another thing I want to mention is I'm working in the direction that the hair grows so that it helps to fan the lashes out. So this is a nice, soft, wispy look. If you want to create more drama, more volume, you'll do the wiggle technique, which we all know. Start at the base and wiggle upward. That will add or deposit more pigment onto the lashes, creating a fuller look. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next product. So I'm going to start with the blush, and I'm going to use on this side a brush that I see people use quite often, and that's like a big, thick brush like this. And they go in and they swirl, kind of collapsing that dome, picking up way too much product. Most of us who are makeup lovers have seen different ways of applying blush. If you want to kind of sculpt, bring out your cheekbones, you'll place the blush out here. If you want to create a fullness to your face or winter bitten cheek, which is more youthful, believe it or not, you'll place it on the apples of the cheeks because that creates that roundness. So today I'm going to go ahead and do the apples of the cheeks. And then I'll work up. So it's kind of a hybrid between the two. Then people will write me or reach out and say, I don't know why but my blush just looks really intense or just looks blotchy. It's not blending right. And that's because of the brush and how much product you're putting on. So I'm switching brushes now. This is my Kevin Aquan, and this is the blush brush, just using the tip of the dome, lightly swirling it into the powder. I'm going to pop it on the cheeks first. I'm kind of placing the color down 
And then I'll go in and lightly buff. Did you see how my hand is doing all the work? I'm not doing this. Whereas on this side, I was doing this, like my whole arm was moving. When you do that, it splays out the pigments, makes it look bigger and fuller, therefore flatter, and you lose dimension because it just becomes a blob of color. Where if you stay precise, just using a flick of your wrist, you create a shape. And everything in makeup is about working with the contours or the skeletal structure of your face shape, which will bring out your features. So here we have, once again, the two different sides. All right, we're gonna go on with the bronzer now. This is the Victoria Beckham bronzer. I love this bronzer, it's so natural looking. This is zero two. I'm gonna mix the two together. Now you can wear the lighter color year round and then as you get more color through spring and summer, you can add this color and warm up your complexion in certain areas, just in the high points of the face if you'd like. But I like to mix the two together. All right, taking the brush, I'm gonna go in now and just in that hollow, very little bit, place that through here. Now there's a difference, like I've mentioned, between contour and bronzer. Contour is cool, bronzer is warm. Contour adds a hollow or basically pulls shapes back into space and bronzer is warm, kind of brings things forward and makes us look nice and lively and contour makes us look a little more model-esque. So I'm gonna go right in that hollow from the top of the ear to the outer cheekbone. You're gonna stop where the jaw opens, it's a C shape. You're gonna lightly place the color and then you're gonna flick upward to create a lift and work up around the temple because that's the high point of the face where the sun would hit and a little on the jaw a little down the nose and i always like to take a little bit and put it in the crease even if i'm going with eyeshadow when i'm done because what i find it does it helps to uniform the makeup look and always make sure you hit those ears so that there is no hard line whatever's left over i go down the neck all right let's go ahead and go on the other side so again, I see this type of action. You see powder kicking up, too much product. And then I see this type of thing where there's a hard line. I see this often where it's light, dark, light. And it looks what I like to call a um, hamburger patty with two buns <laughs> because there's no real blending. It's mostly just chunks or bricks of color. And then I've seen this. We'll go back on the eye. And it's just all brown now and muddy down the sides of the nose, and down the neck, where everything now is starting to look like zebra stripes. A little on the ears. And then, of course, I always see the contour around the forehead area. Looking nice and thick and cakey and muddy on this side. Oh, <laughs> it's so hard for me to not want to fix this, but okay. And to me, the most beautiful part of a face is the eyes. That's what we look at first when we're communicating with others. And it's definitely a focal point. So take your time when it comes to your eye look. I'm going to show you guys first, of course, the mistakes that I've seen quite often. I'm going to take my eyeliner and I'm going to go really heavy underneath the waterline. I see this so, so often with women. But in day-to-day -day life, it can be extremely harsh looking. You have to remember, color grabs color, meaning if I put dark color here and I have dark circles here, that color is going to bring in that surrounding color unless you put on a good amount of concealer. And then once again, you can look very aged that way. This is the look I would say I probably correct the most when it comes to individuals who are looking to correct their makeup look. I tell them, let's get that dark eyeliner out from underneath the eye area. We can still add definition, which I'm gonna show you guys on this eye, but without such intensity and such harshness. Um, then I see them take their finger and very harshly pull underneath this eye area, trying to blend, which you have to remember, we have collagen under there and they're shaped in these little X's. And once you break them, they don't repair after a certain age. So I tell people, don't pull on your eyes too much. All right, then I see this, of course, and they go on top around the whole eye area. Now, are my eyes being brought out? Heck yeah, it is because there's a big black circle around, or a big brown circle, I should say, around my eye. I'm just kind of straightening this out a bit. 
I see people pull the wing out like so and do that. You take your pencil, you're going to sharpen it, get a nice pointed tip. You're going to take very lightly your finger and you're going to press it on the outer edge so that you have a nice taut lid and you're going to work against the lash line. The goal here is that you create a really tight lined look so that way it makes your lashes look longer and we create a fullness. We're trying to not drown the eye out with color. We're trying to subtly define the eye. So stay very thin. I like to work in small little nicks. Working on the side of the pencil, like I said, is probably the easiest. From there, I will take my pencil and just lightly go in the waterline. You could skip this part if you want. That's totally fine. And you could just do the next step instead. Some people don't like to put eyeliner in their waterline spongy smudgy part and just blending it because I don't want anything too harsh under there I'm trying to define but I'm not trying to close the eye up then from there I'm going to do a light little wing and then use the pointy tip to extend it a bit and I'm working very 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 lightly with the sponge part and then you can take your finger or a q-tip and just slightly pull up so I'm going to use my Delium brush in 755 and just soften the harshness of that pencil. Next, we're going to put the eyeshadow on top and around in the bottom. I'm using my NARS Orgasm palette and I'm going to go in with this really pretty orange kind of terracotta color with this taupe color. And then I'm going to go right underneath very very lightly this creates a subtle ombre effect so that you have this beautiful transition of color from dark to light or what I like to call the sunset effect I'm gonna go in with this dark brown kind of shimmery color and I'm gonna go right on top of that liner it's okay if it goes a little higher up than the eyeliner like onto the lid a bit because that actually makes the eyes look fuller and we're also softening the harshness of the pencil while still adding that definition and that depth to the eye area. So here we have this softer side and this side. Now to me, this side is bold and fun and over the top. And from somebody who lives for the post-punk era and the 80s, this I totally get. But for those of you who like something softer, something more day-to-day -day friendly, then head this way. Lips, lips, lips. I'm going to show you guys what I see a lot when people are trying to do a fuller lip when it looks not as natural. So I see this a lot, people going way over their lip line. And I know right now the lip flip is really popular, which is a cosmetic surgery where they just, you know, focus on the center of the lip to make the lips look fuller compared to this side. Now on this side, I'm still going over my natural lip line. I'm just not taking it as far. And then I see this, which is putting on too much lipstick. I like to stamp my lipstick on to create a nice kind of sheen rather than a rich texture. Now let's do the gloss. And ooh, I see this a lot. Taking the gloss, this is the Dior, and just piling it on. On this side I'm just going to do a nice thin layer. For some of you this may seem like it's an exaggeration. It is not. I've seen this look more times than I could count. This is more of the look that I gravitate towards 
and I find that clients gravitate towards as well. But obviously, you guys let me know which one you prefer. And if you guys have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching. Questions, suggestions, always here for you. Don't forget to subscribe and use the product links in the description box down below. I have everything I use today and I have a list of stores that you can shop for anytime for anything you need. Every time you shop with my links, I get a commission and it helps me to continue to do this channel. Lastly, if you've not had enough, head to TikTok or to Instagram and you can see mini tutorials and you can also book me for a one-on-one -on -one artistry education lesson. Just head to shrevoyage.com. Lastly, don't forget to comment, hit that like button. If you want to support the channel, another way to do that is to head to the heart on the top of the bar. Just scroll over. Once you see the heart, you can donate any amount you'd like. Greatly appreciated. All right, everyone. I will see you in the next video, but as always, continue to take care of yourselves and each other. Be kind to one another, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now, everybody.